Congressman Jim Jordan joining us tonight. Congressman uh, Jordan is a ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, also a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, great to have you with us. Uh, let's start with the House vote tonight on this bill. And th yeah. This is quite a, quite a spectacle. The president not threatening to veto it, but calling on House Republicans not to support it. But he didn't make a position known when you originally voted on the bill. Uh, well, give us some, some insight here. Well, here's what's happened, and I'm going to be with you, Lou. Here's what happened in the last two months. So back when this first passed in March, since that time, think about what we've learned. We've learned 39 people unmasked Michael Flynn's name. We learned how they set up Michael Flynn. We've got these transcripts that Mr. Grinnell got released that show that when the whole Trump-Russia investigation started, there was no basis for doing the investigation, something you and I thought all along, knew all along. But now it's proof. Clapper knew. Brennan knew there was nothing there. Comey knew there was nothing there. So all that has transpired since then. And more importantly, we have the, the memorandum from Inspector General Horowitz, who was looking broadly at the FISA now. He first he looked at what they did to Carter Page in the Trump campaign. Now he's looking broadly at the FISA, and he put out a memorandum back in March, on March 30th, which said the 29 cases he's looked at, every single one, every single one had major problems. Four of them, Lou, didn't even have what's called the Woods file, which is the file you have where you keep the main evidence, that the, the supporting evidence mm -hmm. documentation for what you then take to the FISA court. So 29 American citizens who were spied on, every single one of those had major problems. So that's all transpired since that first vote. And the president simply saying, look, until we get this all figured out, we ain't reauthorizing anything. We're not doing it. So God bless the president. We, we, this is a good product we've got, we, we got working, but it can get better. And that's what the president wants to see happen. Yeah, I, I, I will second your God bless uh, for this president because of what he has uh, endured, all that he's done for the country, and then have to ask the, uh, the Republicans to stop the, more of the madness. I also don't quite understand the madness from the Justice Department, and perhaps you can give us some insight into that. Talking about given the cumulative negative effect of the legislative changes on the department's ability, uh, you know, to spy... Uh, they want <laughs> they want the president to veto it for an entirely different reason. For a different what reason. What in yeah. the hell is going on at the Justice Department, Congressman? Well, look at what the president tweeted out though just a few hours ago. He said there should be no warrantless searches on American citizens, and amen to that as well. So this president understands it. Amen. He's he's lived through it. Mr. Horowitz has given us the evidence and the and the and the done the investigations that show just how bad it is. So, like the president said, let's get to the bottom of all this before we reauthorize the program that was abused by Jim Comey's FBI and the intelligence community in the Obama administration. Hey, Lou, think about this. Six people in the Treasury Department were unmasking Michael Flynn's name. In the Treasury Department, six different people. Holy cow, what was going on in those last several weeks of the Obama administration? We're now beginning to understand how determined they were to go after this president, how determined they were to cover up their, their scheme that they had back in, in their administration. And Jim Comey was the guy who was going to protect him because he was going into the next administration. And then when he gets fired, Bob Mueller's going to protect him. But finally, we are getting the answers, getting to the details, getting to the facts. And that's why we're holding this up until we get a better product for the president to sign. A better product. Um, I, I like the idea that you don't sign a damn thing. There's no excuse to be spying on Americans for any reason. And that crap has got to end. That's yep. just one, one opinion. Uh, we are going to it's seek right your opinion, opinion on what it's we're going right to opinion. learn from. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to get your opinion on, uh, well, Lindsey Graham, uh, sort of a, well, a, a, uh, I guess he's an investigator now. Uh, and he's going to have Rod Rosenstein before him. Uh, we're going to get Congressman Jim Jordan's view of what uh, we can expect. Former acting DNI Rick Grinnell setting former U.N. Ambassador Samantha Power straight in one of his last acts. Power claiming today Senator Marco Rubio has sounded the alarm about peddling Trump conspiracy theories and how that does Russia's disinformation work somehow. Grinnell quickly replied... After spending years peddling a Russian collusion hoax, but under oath admitting you saw nothing, forgive us if we ignore your new so-called warnings. Uh, we're joined once again by Congressman Jim Jordan. Well, what do you think of the job Rick Grinnell did as uh, DNI? Amazing. I mean, three months, compare three months of Rick Grinnell with three years of Chris Ray. 
I mean, Rick Rennell got things done, and he's right about Samantha Powers and her, her so-called, you know, warning. I mean, for, for goodness sake, they took a dossier to a secret court, a dossier they knew was false, they knew was unverified, they knew was paid for by the Clinton campaign, they knew was Russian disinformation, and they used that to get a warrant to go spy on President Trump's campaign. And now they're lecturing us? And then Jim Comey goes up to Trump Tower in yeah. early January in 17 and tells the president about that dossier that he already knew was false, that he knew was paid for by the Clintons, that he knew was Russian disinformation, talks to the president about it so they can leak it and the press will report the fact that he's talked to the president about it and they want to lecture us. So it's, it, you can't make this stuff up, but it's just ridiculous what we hear from some of these Democrats. Ridiculous, uh, tragic. And how do, how do the Democrats find so many creepy people to aggregate in one place in the swamp? It is just, it's appalling. It's, it's downright scary. 39 uh, of them unmasking of scary, Michael Flynn. 39 of them unmasking <laughs> Michael Flynn's name, too. Well, they, they apparently meant to get it done. Uh, yeah. Rod Rosenstein, first witness before the long-awaited uh, Senator Graham committee, the Judiciary Committee. Uh, sure. What do you expect to happen? What do you hope? Well, no, I, to see? I think it's I, I think it's great that Lindsey's bringing him in. Uh, you know, remember Rod Rosenstein was the guy who was there during that that critical time in, in May of 2017. Jim Comey gets fired on on May 9th. Bob Mueller gets named special counsel on May 17th. That those eight days are critical because we deposed Jim Baker, the former chief counsel at the FBI. And Jim Baker told us in that eight-day time frame, the people at the FBI were looking to Rod Rosenstein was looking to wear a wire to record the president of the United States. Rod Rosenstein was looking to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove the president from office. Rod Rosenstein was talking about, uh, and Andy McCabe and these guys were talking about an obstruction of, uh, of justice investigation into the president. And what they ultimately settled on doing, their course of action was to get Bob Mueller named as special counsel. And Jim Comey leaked his memos to create the momentum to get Bob Mueller as the special counsel. And two years later, and $30 million, and all the subpoenas and everything else they did, they came back with what they already knew. There was nothing there. So, yeah, I think Rod Rosenstein's a good, good person to bring in right away. And let's find out what, what he knows about wearing a wire, what he was doing about the 25th Amendment and these other issues that, that came up in that critical, critical time frame in May of 17. Do you, do you get the sense that Lindsey Graham this time means to actually find something out because he went more than a year after promising to investigate the investigators? Of course, he's immediately ruled out any possible uh, uh, prosecution uh, of President Obama or uh, former Vice President Biden. Uh, strange ways to go, but then it is the Senate Judiciary Committee after all. Your yeah. thoughts? No, I do. And, I, you know, they're going to subpoena a number of people. I think that is real important. I keep coming back to this fact. The insurance policy started off as the investigation itself. Once the president won the election, I think the insurance policy turned into, well, we got to make sure Michael Flynn doesn't stay at his national security advisor in the, in the, in the Trump administration because he knows about intelligence. He might find out what we did. So they get rid of Michael Flynn. And Jim Comey's the guy who's going to travel into the next administration and protect him. When he gets fired, it becomes Bob Mueller becomes the special uh, the counsel. So that becomes the insurance policy. We got to, there's a lot of people I think we need to talk to. Lindsay's going to subpoena them all. And I think uh, uh, make sure they come in and hopefully get to the bottom of all this. Uh, Congressman uh, John Radcliffe, uh, you've worked with him, served with him in the Congress. Good man. Uh, as the DNI, do you think that he will, de uh, he will release those uh, transcripts uh, for General Flynn uh, that were uh, declassified by Rick Grinnell? Yeah, I, I, I think he will. I think John, John Ratcliffe's a good man. I think he's going to do the great work like Rick Grinnell started there. Um, I, I look forward to working with him. I want that transcript between Mr. Flynn and Mr. Kislyak. I want the original 302. Remember, when Peter Strzok and Pianka go in and try to set up Mike Flynn on Comey's orders, they, they do, there's the initial 302, the notes taken of that interview. And then it was changed by Peter Strzok. So I want to see the Kislyak Flynn conversation. I want to see the original 302. And then I want to see the one that was doctored, the one that was amended and written by Peter Strzok. I want to see all three of those documents. We have asked to get at, to access to that as well uh, from, uh, from Christopher Ray, those 302s. Um, we've also asked to make sure we get a chance to interview Mr. Pianka at some, uh, some time. So well, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to get all that information. Congressman, great to have you with us. Very quickly, we're out of time, but uh, does the vote uh, fail or, or pass on the FISA reauthorization today? 
I think it's going to lose because you're going to see the vast majority of us Republicans oppose it. Um, and I think it's going to be tough uh, to, to see if it passes. The other interesting thing is I think there are 70 some Democrats, Lou, who aren't even showing up. They're mailing in the vote. They're phoning it in to a colleague via proxy and some colleague's going to vote for them. So it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out here in a few hours. Yeah. Better watch that mail-in vote there in the House. It's no kidding. A lot no of fraud kidding. associated with that. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Congressman right. Congressman Jim Jordan.